video we're going to talk about the dryness of seeds and by dryness we mean not just that they're dry on the outside but we're talking about the internal moisture content and this is important for seeds for three reasons the first is that the drier they are the longer they're viable in storage the second reason is you don't want them to go moldy in storage which they can do if they're damp at all and the third reason is if you're doing pest control and putting seeds in the freezer so I'll talk a little bit more about each of those so the time that the seed can be kept in storage is called its viability period and the seed is, kind, is still alive and it's still kind of um, using up its energy. So we want to slow it down so it lasts in storage as long as possible so that it doesn't use that energy up quickly. And we do that by making sure that it's dry, really dry, and also, you know, in a cool um, location. So that's why we always say cool, dark, dry for storage helps them last longer. The second reason obviously you don't want them to go mouldy in the jar um, and that can be very disappointing even with quite small seeds that you think are dry they often end up clumping together and then you've destroyed your seed. Um, the third reason is pest control. One of the best ways of dealing with um, eggs and insect eggs and insects themselves if they've managed to stow away in your seeds is to just put it in the freezer put your jar of seeds in the freezer for um, 48 to 72 hours to kill those um, eggs and insects but if we do that when there's moisture in the seeds that moisture that water expands when it freezes and that can damage the cells of your seed and then you don't have good seed to grow next season so I need to be absolutely dry before you put it in the freezer. I should probably also mention to you that while we were drying things with our paper bags of seeds in here when we also talk about putting things in the freezer please don't just put a paper bag in the freezer as soon as you take it out um, it will absorb all the moisture in the air because it's cold and you get condensation and you probably know this when you take something out of the freezer and put it on the counter the outside of it goes really wet you don't want that moisture to go straight back into the seeds so when you do take your jars out of the freezer don't open them straight away leave them and sit until they've come to room temperature so what's the easiest way to tell that our seeds are dry enough well for some things like um, cucumbers and other cucurbits we can tell by snap testing them so we just take one and if we can just snap it cleanly rather than it bending then that's a good indication that it's dry enough with peas and beans the easiest way is with a hammer so if we hit them with the hammer and they squash then we know they're not dry enough and if they shatter nicely then they're clearly dry enough Another method of checking them is to take your jar of seeds and I recommend that you do this with a sample, not all of your seeds of something, um, and put your jar in the sun for half an hour so that it heats up and you'll find if there's moisture in the seeds there will be condensation on the inside of the jar. This is not good for the seeds so you want to only do this with a sample. So there are lots of seeds where we don't have really good easy tests to tell whether they're dry enough and so one of the things we can do is use hygrometers you might have a temperature um, and relative humidity gauge that you can use or you can use something like these relative humidity indicator cards when we start talking about relative humidity it can sound a bit tricky but it's pretty straightforward um, it's relative to temperature and by that we mean the amount of air that sorry the amount of moisture that can be held in the air is more in warmer temperatures than in cold temperatures so for example at 25 degrees celsius and 50 percent relative humidity the air is holding twice as much moisture as air at 15 degrees celsius and 50 percent relative humidity we probably all know this because when it's really warm and humid we feel like we're you know in a sauna and we can feel all that humidity in the air but when it's cold crisp and dry then you know it feels cold crisp and dry <laughs> so what can we do to improve the drying of our seeds the first thing we can do is make sure it's in an airy place and that there is good air movement so fans are a good idea because the moving air will help wick away moisture 
We can get more technical, we could use a dehumidifier um, if you have one. Um, we can also use food dehydrators. Um, this comes with some caution because we don't want to take the seeds over 35 degrees if we can avoid it because you will be damaging the seeds slightly. So on a really cool setting um, or, or no heat at all, a food dehydrator is essentially doing the fanning and moving the air for you. A note on things like air conditioners, they do, well, and obviously not an evaporative air conditioner, which is adding moisture to the air, but modern air conditioners, a lot of them are actually lowering the humidity. So an air conditioned room will be a bit drier than perhaps your warm air outside. The other things we can use are things like silica gel. Now these comes with a few caveats and I've got some things that you can just get from the local supermarket which, is, which are quite cheap. And so I'd like to kind of go through all of those. Right, so here's a few different um, moisture absorbent things. This is a um, indicator silica gel, which you can buy online. It comes, um, this particular one is orange and when it absorbs moisture, it turns green, so you know when it um, needs to be reset. Um, these were put out last night and it really only takes overnight for the silica gel to absorb all the moisture that it can from the air. So this is why we need to kind of be careful about our silica gel, because here's a bunch of ones that came out of packets of things that I have just put in a jar with one of those indicator cards. I should have explained when they're pink, there's moisture, quite a bit of moisture in the air and you read the level when it gets to be um, a, a lilac -y lavender colour. So this one here, I put those silica gel packets through the oven so they're blue and I know that the air in there is quite dry because those um, packets have removed all the moisture from in there. Reusing those silica gel packets you really need to reset them in the oven before you can use them. But please be careful with that. You'll notice that some of these are um, in quite are in plastic, plastic packets and they're likely to melt in your oven. So, you know, I can't really tell you how those will all reset. If you want a cheap option, I recommend the pet section of the supermarket aisle, uh, kitty litter for cats. This is a bentonite chick kitty litter. It came in a paper bag. Um, so you can see it's pink on that indicator card. So it has absorbed the moisture either in my house or perhaps even in the store before I got it. But it was actually really easy to dry out in the oven. Um, and so there it is dry and I can now use that exactly as I would the silica gel. I don't really need the card. I know that if I've put it through the oven that it's dry and I can now put packs of seed in jars with this material and it was actually quite cheap. This is another kitty litter. This is a silica gel one. This came in a nice sealed plastic bag and that I didn't have to reset that in the oven. It's nice and dry in there. I haven't tried resetting this yet so I don't know how reusable this one is, but that works straight out. And here's one that was exactly like the, the dried one at the beginning, but I've put, I've put a bag of seeds in there with that to be dried out. And you can see that it's not quite so blue in there anymore because there's moisture coming out of those seeds. Over time, we need to leave it in here for a while. Um, that will equalize and the moisture, the silica gel will suck it up. In general I recommend probably you want about as much volume of your absorbent as for seed um, to really make a difference and to pull moisture out of them. So it's actually quite a lot. To reset the silica gel or any of these you want more than an hour in the oven at 120 degrees so it does take a little bit of time to get all that moisture back out again. If you don't know whether your seed is dry or not, you can just take the safe path and keep it in a paper bag. Then you know that you're not holding the moisture in um, and causing it to go mouldy. This will be a problem if you live in a humid area. So if you're south of Sydney, this will be easy. Um, 
if you're in a more humid area, maybe you need to go and talk to your local seed saving group to get advice about how they're handling it because they'll know a lot more about the relative humidity and the, the issues in that particular location. So I probably should explain a little bit more about these humidity indicator cards. This is a six spot version. They do come in three spot versions. So they're not super accurate. They're only every 10%. Um, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 after that. But they probably give us a, a pretty good indication for our seed drying. We want to get it, the um, humidity down sort of here in the middle. Uh, obviously outside here at the moment, we're up around the 50 to 60% relative humidity because we read them when they're at sort of lavender between that pink and blue. When the whole lot is blue, we know the air is really dry. When the whole lot is pink, we know it's way too moist. And it's pretty easy to read. And these cards are reusable. You don't have to do anything. I can take this one when it's all pink. I put it into a dry area. It's going to go blue. Um, there's, you don't need to worry about resetting the cards. It's only the silica gel that you need to reset in the oven. The other thing we can use that you might have in your house is a electronic thermometer thingy which might show relative if it, if it also shows relative humidity it can be really useful there's nothing to stop you putting one of these inside your jar and it will tell you the temperature and relative humidity that it's that, it, that it's in um, i should probably also mention all you need is an airtight container i'm using big olive jars because that's what i've got but any airtight container will do bucket with a well sealing lid, um, anything like that. Right, so we're using all of these techniques to get our seed dry enough. Once, we, once it is dry enough, we can just store it by putting it in a jar. We know it's dry enough um, and it'll be fine. The reason that we might choose to use a jar rather than just leaving it in a paper bag is that we're slowing down that aging of the seed because it, we're keeping any fluctuations in relative humidity away from it um, so that they will survive for longer. I hope you understand now why dryness is so important to seed savers and hopefully you've learned some techniques that you can use to help make sure your seed is dry and that it will um, store really well and you'll have very successful seed saving. Mm -hmm.